it's Jess. Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. I'm sitting out here in front of my greenhouse right now. I've been full swing into planting the garden for this year. Totally loving it. But I wanted to take a break and do a video for you guys sharing an idea that I think could probably be useful to several of you. I love the garden. I love to grow food. It's something I'm so passionate about and I love encouraging other people to do that. However, my life has not always been where it is now, where I get to have this big, beautiful garden. There was a time where I felt absolutely stuck living in a suburban neighborhood with very little skills and very few resources and I desperately wanted to garden. However, I believed the untruth that because I was stuck in that place that I was helpless and that I could not do anything about my situation and unfortunately I missed out on a lot of time that I could have spent uh, learning and growing in my gardening skills by just being a little bit more resourceful. Now since starting my garden, I have been able to encourage a lot of people to garden exactly where they are and turn their waiting room into a classroom. And part of doing that is thinking a little bit outside the box and using uh, your determination to grow a garden as your number one resource because it really is the most important one. Today I want to talk to you about some cheap gardening ideas, container gardening, um, if you don't have a lot of money to spend or you don't have the physical capacity to build raised bed gardens, to till up the ground, to do all of those things. I just want to talk to you about some options that you might not have thought of. Now here in front of me I've got a handful of items. We're going to really focus on the pool today, but I just wanted to show you some more options of things that you could put soil in and plant in. I found this Ikea bag on the side of the road. Uh, this was actually someone must have either thrown it out of their car or flown out of their truck but anyway it was in the ditch across the street from my house it's obviously pretty filthy I've already washed it off but these actually make pretty good container gardens they're they're a grow bag um, they're they're breathable you can just poke some holes in the bottom to have drainage maybe a few on the side to have drainage fill this up with soil and plant just about anything that you could want in here and it does help that it has handles that really actually do hold a good bit of weight so you could actually move it around on your porch or your patio. Another option to consider are these little grow bags. These are really affordable on Amazon. I, I wanna say it's around $15 for five of them and they're seven gallon bag. They are breathable, have handles. These are a good option if you're growing with just like a porch or a patio or maybe you've got a garden bed space that you can kind of line the outside with these. I'm growing dwarf tomato plants in these this year. I'm going to put them just out here on the porch in my greenhouse. Especially if you're kind of wanting to go with something that's maybe not as loud as some of these other options. These are definitely uh, using items for a purpose that is not their intended purpose. If you want something that looks a little more uniform, uh, don't forget that this is an option. I think a lot of people forget that this very valid option of container gardening is there, it's affordable, and it works. Now here I have a Sterlite tub. Um, this actually is the very same tub that I used in a video I released back before winter showing how to grow salad greens in cold weather using a soil bag and a tub as a greenhouse. It served as a greenhouse through the winter. It's uh, held up just fine. And if I so wanted to, I'm actually not going to do it. I'm going to keep it uh, solid for uh, using it as a greenhouse or just a container. But you can drill holes in the bottom of these and plant in these. It works. They're a lot more affordable than purchasing the really large plastic planters. Um, and it's essentially the same exact thing. You can get one of these tubs for, you know, the five or six dollar range. Whereas those really big planters that hold this much that you can actually plant some substantial plants in. A lot of times they're 20 plus dollars. thing that I wanted to show you guys today was making a raised bed garden out of a kiddie pool. You can get these for free if you're willing to wait a little while. Like come June or July, a post on Facebook saying if anybody has any busted kiddie pools that they want to get rid of or just drive around a suburban neighborhood on trash pickup day and you can find 
several of them out by the street waiting to be picked up. They're easy to bust holes in, kids bust holes in them, pets bust holes in them, and then at that point, most people think, oh, that thing is useless, but you're gonna drill holes in it anyway. You need drainage in it. So if you wanna wait and save some money and uh, keep something like this out of the landfill, give it a second life, you can go that route. Or if you are really desperate for a garden and a $7 raised bed sounds great to you, here it is. This one appealed to me because it was hot pink uh, and it didn't have little pictures of dolphins on it. I did buy the smallest one that they had. Uh, you could use a larger one, but keep in mind, whatever container you decide to use, you're going to have to fill with soil. And really, the expensive part of this is gonna be the soil. It's the same exact thing with our, our raised garden beds. We used all salvage materials. The soil was by far the most expensive part for us about putting our garden in. Now, the first step that we are going to do in planting this is we're going to put some drainage holes in it. I'm using a drill today. You don't have to have a drill to do this. It's definitely gonna make quicker work, but you could easily cut holes in the bottom of this. Okay, as you can see, I've put several, several holes in the bottom of this pool. Just wanna make sure that our soil can be well draining so our plants don't drown. I actually have a huge pile of compost, uh, the same super soil that I've been putting in my own beds, but I bought bagged soil for this project just so I could give you guys a real idea of how much it actually takes to fill up one of these pools. So you can kinda get an idea of the cost before you decide to do this project. So it looks like three 50 pound bags actually filled this pool up just perfectly. Now I bought organic potting soil, which in my area costs about $10 a bag. So I just spent $7 on the pool and $30 on the soil. You could buy cheaper soil if that was something that you needed to do. All right, so this has drainage now. It has good soil in it, so let's put some plants in it. Now I've got a handful of plants here that I'm gonna go ahead and put in this kiddie pool garden. Uh, you could plant most things in here. Now I'm putting a zinnia in. Uh, this is gonna fill out pretty nicely and give some really pretty color to this bed. Um, I'm also gonna plant two habanada pepper plants and peppers will do fine in this because if you do have to give them a little bit of support uh, one stake down the middle should be sufficient. The only thing that I would really be concerned about is trying to grow like really big indeterminate tomatoes because you don't have the depth to really go down with any like big cages, uh, trellises, anything like that. You could potentially grow this up against a trellis, like an external one and grow a tomato and tie it up on there. But you just need to think about what you're putting in here and what it's going to require in terms of support. I do have a few determinate little dwarf tomato plants that I'm gonna put in here. This is about 10 inches of soil though, so you wouldn't have to worry about the root systems of pretty much anything. It would be a really good option um, for growing anything leafy. My mom actually used a kiddie pool this year to grow broccoli and cauliflower over winter. My friend Daniel, whenever he moved back to Alabama, no longer had access to work in our garden, he actually went and got some kiddie pools and set up gardens and grew lots of radishes and kale. And you've got several square feet here. It's not a, it's not a tiny space. You can definitely get quite a bit done with this space. Uh, this would be a great way to grow, uh, you know, salad greens or kale, leafy things right outside your kitchen door. This would be a great garden to put herbs in, uh, something that you could keep really close to the house, even if you already had a good sized garden going. I'm gonna take these radishes and fill out the rest of this space with these radishes because these are gonna be ready to harvest in just a few weeks. So they won't be in competition with all the rest of these plants, they will be uh, being pulled about the time that these plants start to overshadow them. So all of my extra space I'm filling in with radishes. I've also got some space here and I'm gonna put some basil seedlings and it looks like I probably have 
room for one more plant. I'm gonna go grab one more pepper. All right, I'm gonna put a red mini bell pepper right here on the other side. My idea was with this little garden and the reason why I planted the habanadas, the nasturtium, the little tomatoes, the mini bell. I just thought it would be fun to have this one established little garden that my kids know they can come down here and eat out of at any time. Now they help themselves to the big garden, but especially with the peppers and ones that look like habaneros, they know not to just eat anything without asking. And so now I know I've not, I've not put anything in here that they can't munch on freely. And there we have it. Uh, those radishes will start popping up here in just a few days. In a few weeks, they'll be ready to harvest and all of these plants will start to really fill out at that point. In a month and a half, we'll have fruit on these plants. The flowers will be blooming. And this uh, little $7 garden bed will be full of food and uh, full of life. And maybe it's just me, but I think that little pink pool garden is pretty cute. A few final things before uh, you set this up. We just put 150 pounds of soil in this pool it's heavy so where you want it go ahead and put it before you fill it up another thing is keep in mind that whatever grass you put this on is going to kill it you can put this on a porch just make sure it's in a place where it's not going to damage anything by draining and again keep in mind if you want to do a larger pool you totally can but do remember that whatever size you buy you're gonna to have to fill it with soil you don't have to fill the pool as full as I have but I wanted to plant tomatoes and peppers and some things that actually need some root space um, if you just wanted to grow like salad greens for instance and you were gonna harvest them as baby greens you could fill this halfway up and it would still work that is it for us today super simple project I hope that you feel encouraged if you do decide to go ahead and plant a kitty pool garden. I would love to see photos of it. Put them on our Facebook group, Friends of Roots and Refuge Farm. Uh, I would love to see what all of you do with this fun little cheap project. Thank you guys so much for watching. I bless you. Until next time.